Nanomaterials are everywhere these days, from a catalytic converter in your car, to solar panels, to therapeutic phototherapy. But an aspect preventing some industries from widely exploiting them is the efficiency, cost, and dangerous manufacturing processes of the nanomaterials used in their catalytic processes. We may have just solved that issue. Detergent-assisted fabrication of multifunctional nanomaterials produces better-performing nanomaterials with consistent and tunable shapes and architecture, all while reducing costs, improving manufacturability, and minimizing environmental and safety concerns. This technology represents a new paradigm of production for wide areas of applications in the energy sector, photosensitizers for therapeutics, photocatalysts, and photovoltaics. Hong Yu Fan at Sandia National Laboratories pioneered the development of this technology. So, you know, surfactant at home in the kitchen that they form those micelles or emulsions that they will encapsulate all the greasy stuff from the dishes. And that will make all the oils and greasy stuff dissolve in the water. And that's how we wash away the greasy stuff and clean up your dishes. And that's the concept that we borrowed from daily life. It inspired us to use it for the material synthesis. And the whole process is very simple. So when the detergent dissolves in water, they form micelles, and the hydrophobic precursors will automatically suck into the hydrophobic cavities or the uh, micelles. And then the crystallization will occur within the confined environment forming very well-defined morphology and with control size. Current nanomaterial production methods like chemical bulk solution create erratic and uncontrolled shapes and properties, making any sort of physiochemical engineering impossible. But catalytic materials rely on specific morphology or active crystal surface to realize their optimum performance. And with irregularly shaped nanomaterials, it takes a much higher quantity to achieve the equivalent performance of nanomaterials with consistent and well-defined morphology. This results in a higher price for a poorer performance. In addition, current production methods use harmful organic solvents, can create toxic waste products, and present potentially dangerous working conditions for their manufacturers. But Sandia's method essentially uses only detergent and water. You know, the whole solution processing is in water and using the, the daily life uh, detergent. So the process is green and uh, environmental uh, friendly. We can filter and collect the particle and reuse the detergent again. Our method can also produce nanoparticles of new shapes that aren't accessible by other technologies, offering a new opportunity for the development of shape-dependent applications. Finally, the ability to adjust the chemical and physical nature of nanomaterials at different crystallization stages provides a powerful new degree of freedom in manufacturing, enabling further tunability to achieve desirable functions and properties. With the well-defined morphology of materials, it can critically help us to predict material performance because we can control the morphology and size. The, the regularity um, and the monodispersity of the powders that he was able to make was, uh, was something that we'd never seen before. And we wanted to talk about what is the possible application of this new technology to what we do, how can it help us? And we didn't see a lot of application as far as putting it into a part and blowing it up um, or putting it into a weapon system. But we saw an incredible, you know, powerful application as it uh, feeds into our modeling efforts. We spend a lot of time and effort going into developing models so that we don't have to actually physically build parts and test them out for every single iteration that we want to do. But all of the assumptions and, and fudge factors that we have to put into those models to make them work really compromises the output. What this method provided us the ability to do is control the morphology so that the assumptions and the fudge factors that we have to put into the models to account for changes in or differences in morphology from the real material to what we can model goes away. I mean, if we can actually define uh, the material as well as we could what Hong Yu's method produces, you know, there wouldn't be an approximation in the model. We could capture it and, and put it in the model.
Our detergent-assisted fabrication of multifunctional nanomaterials is an innovative, standalone technology. Imagine the breakthrough that nanomaterials with engineered, consistent, and reproducible morphology with enhanced performance at a reduced cost and manufactured in an environmentally friendly and economically efficient manner could bring to so many industries. As far as I know, nobody can make material like this anywhere ever. Uh, I've been in the field for um, 17 years and I've been in new material discovery, I've been in processing, and I've never even heard of a tool like this. Um, it really changes the game. And right now, yeah, the major impact that I see is fitting into our model system. But in reality, if we can scale this up and make it more cost effective, then it can actually go into components and be applied to components so that we get the kind of response that is actually currently unavailable. We can't get the kind, exactly the kind of response out of our components because you can't make material that does that. This may allow us to make materials that uh, actually improve the performance of our existing uh, components. Thank you.